is guys, it's your boy Blast HD, and today we're gonna watch a video called Top 10 Strangest and Creepiest Things Found in Storage Devices or Lockers. This should be good. Um, I used to actually go to like storage auctions and shit, so I've seen and heard of some of the fuck shit that comes out of these things. The link to the original video is in the description down below, of course. And as always, Lego. You can feel comfort in storing your private belongings inside lockers and other storage devices. However, sometimes the private belongings found inside these storage devices are rather strange and disturbing. Number 10. The only time it's acceptable to keep around a headless doll is the five minutes between the dog ripping the head off and you discovering it. When someone stores a headless doll among knives, it's most likely a problem. Robert Dewey Hoskins, who was rearrested after escaping from a mental hospital in February of 2012, was convicted of threatening to murder Madonna, and that headless baby doll was found in his storage unit in Long Beach. LA Weekly reports on the 10 creepiest items found in the Madonna Stalker's storage unit. Besides the headless baby doll and dozens of knives, Hoskins kept a very scary clown mask, a sumo wrestler baby doll, a Barbie backpack, and so much more. I love how, amongst all the things that found, knives, headless baby dolls, a, a horrifying clown mask, and an ass-naked sumo wrestler doll, this nigga gonna put up the fucking Barbie backpack. <laughs> I don't know why, but it, it does make this dude seem more dangerous. <laughs> Like, man, not only does this dude have knives, bruh, this nigga got Barbie apparel. My nigga, you know this dude's off his rocker. Like, <laughs> yo. Number nine. A married couple with two kids made a horrific discovery when the mother, Mrs. Copeland, found a safe in her 10-year-old son's room. When questioned about where he got it and its contents, he simply pleaded the fifth. Both parents were unable to get any info out of their son. Eventually, Mr. Copeland was able to pry the safe open and was shocked at what he found inside. The head of their dog that had recently passed and was buried in their yard was stuffed into the safe. Blood poured out of the box as Mr. Copeland screamed in horror. Their son said he loved that dog so much that he wanted to have a part of her forever, so he dug up the body, cut off its head with a tiny kitchen knife, and stuffed it in the safe that was found by the mother later on that same day. Adoption! Instant adoption! You're done! You're fired as my child! I'm not doing it! Tell me that's not some paranormal activity bullshit, okay? In the movie Paranormal Activity, the whole goddamn movie, the, the female's giving signs that she's on that fuck shit and she's probably gonna kill everyone, right? Bruh, tell me this ain't a red sign. Tell me this is not a red alert, huh? Is this not a sign? He's basically telling you he's going to kill you all and eat you in your sleep. And you, why didn't he, why didn't Mr. Nightmare talk about how they later on, while he, the kid was asleep, packed all this shit up in the family station wagon and drove like seven states away, never to return for the child. Because that, that is, that is the real response. This is, that's, this is not the right thing to do. Number eight. Some people like to take their work home with them, but Dr. Michael Birkeland, a former medical examiner, took his work to his storage unit in Pensacola, and when I say work, I'm talking about body parts for more than 100 people. All this creepiness was discovered in August 2012 when some poor soul bought the contents of Dr. Birkeland's unit at a storage auction. It seems that Dr. Birkeland's hobby included the storing of 10 brains as well as other body parts like lungs, hearts, and tissue samples. Dr. Birkeland was thrifty as well as creepy, keeping a heart stored in a styrofoam cup. Police noted that formaldehyde was leaking from the cracked lid. The body parts, which were harvested during private autopsies performed inside funeral homes in Florida, were also found inside Tupperware containers, trash bags, and specimen cups. Interestingly, Dr. Birkeland was fired from his job as a medical examiner in 2003 for failing to complete autopsy reports in a timely manner and for keeping a big backlog of cases. Number 7 
Unit B-8 in U-Store Self Storage in Clearwater, Florida, held something that couldn't be auctioned off when the family fell behind on payments in January of 2012. When the storage facility manager told the family that the contents were going to be sold, the truth came out. Among Some of these son of a bitches did not have an actual body in their storage. Among the banana boxes and old TVs rested the grandma's skeletal remains. Authorities identified the grandma as Ann Bunch, born on January 1st, 1900. Since the woman's death in 1995, her remains had been stored inside a painted blue coffin in a storage unit that wasn't air conditioned. For 17 years, her remains rested inside a warm storage unit. The body had been properly prepared for a burial by a funeral home in Alabama, which explains the lack of odor. That's fucked up, dude. Like, for real? You gonna, you, you gonna lay your, your mom to rest? In a storage unit? Really, 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 bruh? These hoes ain't loyal. They're, her her children were the hoes, and they were not loyal. That's fucked up. Hoes ain't loyal. Says, a lot of people refuse to go to public pools, and maybe this will be one more reason. An elderly man named Jacob Pastor, who swam in a public pool in Colorado, used the same locker in the changing room every time he visited. A lot of the lockers went unused, as most people didn't even need to use them, and it wasn't a very crowded pool to begin with. One unfortunate day, however, perhaps he had tired himself out a little too much and opened the wrong locker, the one right next to his usual one. The skeletal remains of a human fell out from the locker, almost as if it were tackling him to the ground. By the looks of it, the body that once was had been in there for years, as it was fully decomposed. It looked as though somebody had been forcefully jammed in there, or perhaps they simply got stuck in there themselves. That mystery will remain unsolved. Number. That's not a good way to die. Stuffed in a fucking locker? Ain't that a bitch? <laughs> that's, a, that's some school bully type shit. <laughs> Imager user Oldswagon is a reformed thief who earns money on the side by unlocking safes for people, but little did he know that this job could lead to him helping solve a vile crime. A landlord contacted the lockmaster to help him bust into a safe that one of his tenants had left behind, but neither of them were prepared for what was lurking inside. Once Oldswagen had disabled the lock by hotwiring it, the safe swung open and revealed that things would have gone very differently if he had used an acetylene torch to bust through the door, because inside, as pictured, they found a live grenade. Unfortunately, the live grenade was one of the more innocent items concealed within the safe's near-impenetrable metal walls. The SD cards pictured were all filled with child pornography, and the journal was so depraved that Oldswagon wrote, I thumbed through it, and I won't tell you what was in it so that you could actually sleep tonight. The authorities were informed of the upsetting material, and all the items pictured were confiscated to help find the perpetrator who is believed to have been running a child pornography ring. Number 4. In Fort Collins, Colorado, 1987, a school locker was searched after the murder of a local girl named Peggy Hetrick, and the police never forgot what they found. Timothy Lee Masters' locker was crammed full of over 2,200 pages of violent writings and horrific drawings of mutilated bodies, with some of them resembling the scene where Hetrick was murdered. The 15-year-old pupil was found guilty at trial and sentenced to life imprisonment, but he was eventually acquitted in 2008, when advances in forensic science cleared him of acting out his sick fantasies in real life. Peggy Hetrick's killer has never been caught. Number 3. When Mr. Shannon Wisnett bought a barbecue smoker from an auction storage unit, it contained a human leg. The severed limb was wrapped in tinfoil, but when police traced its owner, the leg's origins turned out to be distinctly less murderous than they were expecting. The former owner of the storage unit, Mr. John Wood, was involved in a plane crash in 2004. That meant his leg had to be amputated below the knee. He opted to keep the limb so he could be buried with it, but somehow forgot that he had put it in storage. Bruh! Most people forget their car keys. Some people even forget a birthday. How you forget your whole leg? It's your, it's your leg. That, that, what? What, really? <laughs> like, 
Like, can you imagine what's the response when you find your when you find your missing limb? Oh, that's where I put my entire leg. Ah, oh, gosh dang it, you know. <laughs> Man, I just oh blonde. <laughs> Number two. When she was refurbishing a derelict home, Anne Contola discovered a wall safe hidden behind the plaster work. Convinced it might hold something of value. She called the locksmith to crack it open, but instead of riches, she was greeted with a handful of human teeth. Number one. Reddit user by the name of Lumberjack found a bizarre hidden crawl space in his house, but it was the locked safe within that contained the most spine-chilling material. The tiny place designed to fit a water heater was carpeted and led to a mysterious black door that was locked. In order to be able to sleep in the house ever again, Lumberjack broke through the door and was greeted by a black sentry safe that was looming in the corner. When the safe was opened, it can- Please, money. Come on, money. Daddy needs a brand new yacht. I mean, a, a, well, an initial yacht first, but a second one yacht after that. Come on, money. Contained numerous VHCS tapes that didn't- Fucking child porn every time. God damn it. That's my guess, man. God fucking child porn. Seem to contain innocent home movies. No, 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 no could be found written on one of the tapes. As if that weren't bad enough, there was also a chilling note in anonymous dripping black ink saying, save yourself. Eight months ago, Lumberjack told the Reddit community that he had turned in the tapes to the police. How does that count? That don't, that's not ominous if I don't get to know was on the freak nasty ass tapes. <laughs> so, with that being said, man, honestly, the Nightmare Dude, this guy, Mr. Nightmare, this guy has a voice for fucking creepypasta and just telling this shit, dude. He's like, he's one of my favorite top 10 channels, you know, among Matthew Samtaro and a couple other guys who do uh, horrific stories of real life craziness. With that being said, man, make sure to go subscribe to the homie. The link to this original video was down in the description below. Uh, make sure, subscribe. Uh, Twisms. <laughs> Forgot what I was saying halfway through that shit. I'm gonna edit it out though. <laughs> Make sure to check out my prank channel. I'm uploading two brand new pranks every single week as this one you see on the left. Click the annotation if you want to watch that or look in the description where I'll leave a link for the people who are on phones. And as always, Blasphemous HD out.